What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action. Sporting in the red color, playing as Poseidon. His name is Grass. His opponent today in the blue color, playing as Gaia. His name is Kimo. We are hitting the nitty gritty of this tournament. There are four players remaining. Four players remaining. There's only one victor at the end standing. And there's a long road ahead of everyone else <laughs> remaining in this tournament. There's a long road ahead. Chemo versus Grass. What a tournament we've had thus far. Some of the most insane games in this tournament. A lot of never give up, never surrender attitude. A lot of uh, quick cheesy wins as well. But... Uh, one thing is for certain, there's been fireworks in this game. What's been your favorite moment in this tournament thus far? That's what I want to know. What's been your favorite moment in this tournament thus far? Let me know in the chat, in the comments. I'm excited to hear. But time to talk about this matchup. Grass here. He's kind of come, not from nowhere. I don't want to say he's come from nowhere, but he's come from uh, a place of... of uh, of maybe like sitting in that top 16, kind of just poking his head in, uh, in that top 16 area for, for a little bit. And he's recently really, really upped his game. Uh, top four is a, is a big accomplishment here for Grass. We'll see if he can knock out one of the most seasoned tournament, uh, age mythology tournament players of all time. I think Kimo's arguably won the most S tier tournaments of all time. And, um, and probably also has the most experience, even out of some of the veterans uh, in tournament as well, having participated in nearly every, uh, every major tournament since, I don't even know, maybe like 20, maybe 2016, at the very least since 2019. Uh, so incredibly, incredibly uh, big tournament game here for grass lots to prove here in this one oh, unfortunately this villager has decided that he would rather wander all the way back home than not and uh, grass does catch him out in the middle of nowhere shaking his head a little bit but poseidon versus poseidon what are we poseidon versus poseidon did i just say that what is going on in my head i don't know poseidon versus guy what are we going to see here the map is looking relatively defensive to start things off a back uh townsend here oh and look at this this is a really, really nasty trick here that Grass is doing. Um, I'll explain that a little bit later, but the map here is very, very defensive. Um, it's got the the center, the center pylon, so to speak, the center cliff here. Pylon is not the word. The center cliff here in the middle, kind of cutting the map in half, getting some defensive uh, points on the map to control uh, and and hide behind and all the good stuff that happens there uh, but because the map is so defensive this allows the Gaia player to grab certain situations on the map certain locations on the map and control them very very nicely so for example grabbing this forward town center putting in some Gaia lush onto this position breaking down any sort of walls that got built there once upon a time and then now guess what Grass can't wall off these positions. So the Gaia Lush is going to come in very, very clutch here for Chemo. So we'll see if we can utilize it for his advantage. Now, let's talk about this goat because this is a trick. I'm going to show you the trick right now because I can. But if you are Grass right here and you come in and you put a control group. Oh, you can't see the control group because I've hit this button. And you put a control group over here. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, okay, never mind. We're seeing it leave. Um, And and that control group then disappears, you can actually use it as a zero population scout on a location. So if you really need both locations scouted out so you know which town center is going up and you only have access to one scout, you can utilize a goat and use that trick for yourself there. Uh, as we do see the Hermes coming through, Chemo, no surprises, going through Leto, dropping the military barracks, dropping the counter barracks at this point as well. He does have himself hand axe, pickaxe. Uh, no rush of shaft mine here or bow saw just yet from Chemo. So taking his, um, his time with that one. 
Whereas Grass at this point, no surprises here. He's going for the town center up on this position. The Oracle will be scouting this one out and kimo has got his units popping out already. He doesn't know the back town center is here, but lots of villagers coming up onto this town center. We see seven villagers onto this one. There's also some hunt at the front of this position here as well, as the villagers here looking like they're trying to take out that automaton, not quite able to do so, finishing up the gazelle over here. Apart from that little bit of hunt, there's nothing else remaining on this map for these players to grab. So we'll see what sort of advantage Kimo's going to get with his army here as he does heroize the Mermillo, ensuring that this centaur doesn't get a whole lot of value, but he will be shooting down that automaton down to 29 HP. I, do we see any more automatons getting trained? No extra automatons getting trained by Kimo as the village is getting pushed back, the hero is pushing forward, Town Center just about to be up there for grass. And is more units coming out? Are more units coming out for Kimo? No, they are not. As Kimo. He's going to be wanting to get himself a second town center, a third town center, and moving forward in this game. Grass with the Relic being picked up. He does have the Cathara of Apollo, an extra 10% villager move speed buff there. It might not seem like a lot. Villagers have only got 3.8 speed after all is said and done, but once that Relic goes into the temple, which it is not going to, is it? I don't know. Yes, it is. Then the villagers go up to 4.18 speed. As I said, it might not seem like a lot, but you can also get Divine Blood. Oh, Villager going down to three lions here. Grass doesn't see it. What a, what a nightmare there. Three lions on that lure. Anyways, to finish the point, you can get yourself Divine Blood here, which gives another 20% move speed onto those gatherers. And those villagers zoom around the map. And what does that mean? It means side build galore uh, for, for Grass, which is a big, big deal. As Kimo, he's going to be searching around for something to do. Stables coming up, Military Academy coming up for Grass. He's already got the Watchtowers in. Did he get himself some upgrades as well? We don't see the Hand Axe. We don't see the Pickaxe from Grass. Like we're kind of used to seeing uh, Greek players going for in these kind of situations. So he's going for Military units a little bit earlier, getting his Husbandry out for the Goats around this uh, town center for the time being. Kimo also onto his own Herdables. He's got himself Husbandry as well to, to help eat those Herdables a little bit faster. I do, I do kind of wonder how much more valuable husbandry is for uh, Atlanteans. It's only 50, um, 150 resource, 100 wood, 50 gold. The amount of resources you gain only having one, two, three, four goats, I'm not, I'm really not 100% sure about it. If I'm playing as Greek or Egyptian or Norse, husbandry is always worth it because you get more food from um, from farming. You get a faster farm gather rate, an actual farm gather rate. It's not like an increase in base gather rate. It's just a increase or a decrease in walking time. So you, um, you do end up with more resources overall where that's concerned. But... Yeah, for for, uh, for Atlantean, that's not the case. You don't get any boost on the farm. So is it actually... It'd be interesting. I'd love... If someone's out there and wants to do some testing for me because I'm lazy, let me know how many goats you need to eat, how much food you need to gather from the herdables to get yourself that 150 resources back uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of food. Obviously, food is worth a little bit more than, uh, than, than wood and gold, but still... Let me know, because I think I think it's an interesting question and an interesting thing to know. Is the Katoska boss causing some problems over here? Units are in position here for Kimo. Oh, I love that spider eggs there, as the army going to be coming through. Only a handful of units here, and I think Kimo is going to be fine to deal with this. As the Katoska boss looks like it's uh, you know retreat out of here. That's a sneeze. That's another sneeze. Excuse me. I'm a. Uh, it's fine. Units pushing through here for grass. Unfortunately for Kimo, he doesn't quite get that one defended where that's concerned. As the army going to be retreating back there. Now grass, he's popping back as well. Doing all the good stuff. Village is coming out for Kimo as he needs to get some more farms up. Remember the big, big advantage. Oh, I like that from Kimo actually. He's got himself Bosor already. He's got himself bows already. This is a big thing for Kimo because it means he's going to get more and more wood to build these really expensive farms. But one of the big things, and I talk about this all the time in the Gaia versus X matchup, is if there's not a whole lot of food on the map, 
and your opponent doesn't have a lot, a lot of food on the map. It means that when they have to build the farms, they're going to be stuck in the classical age for quite some time on those farms. And there is actually quite a big difference between having irrigation, having um, flood control versus having plow. So if Kimo can rush out the irrigation, rush out the flood control in this game, he's going to have a big, big advantage where that's concerned as the units swing it around here for Grass and Groom. He's on the other side of the map right now. Kimo, a little bit out of position, but his army is back here. And if he sees these units pushing on this town, and he's easily going to be able to react uh, in time. This is not a not a Zeus army of hoplites to take this down as the uh, Santa are going to come through. I love this move from Grass, tanking that town center with that 34% pierce armor, but more importantly, the 220 HP as the army coming over for Chemo. Town center getting targeted down. Chemo might want to consider getting himself masons here just to hold on to this one as the villagers popping in and out. We do see a cheeky little guy of forest here as the army going to be coming through. Military barracks get, getting thrown up on this position as well as the villagers jumping in and out of the position here and now the army of grass does need to consider retreating away chemo with that uh with that forest here i mean it does protect the town center but it does kind of give it a bit of an awkward angle here for chemo to engage on that position there as we do see a cheeky carabala so that's going to be a big big help to defend meanwhile grass getting walls up on this position to defend over here as well very, very uh, smart play to get that control in there. I'd love to see the same thing on the other side of the map as well as Shaft Mine coming through for Chemo right now. His economy is going to be absolutely gigantic in this game. And the big problem always comes for Poseidon here, for Greek uh, in general against Gaia. If you don't get damage done in any way, shape or form, the natural economy of Gaia is going to come through and there's going to be this big, big timing which can be hit as the counter barracks coming up or has come up on this position. Love the positioning here from Chemo on this town center. It's not going to be able to get attacked at all from Grass in this classical age. He has defended himself beautifully here. Armory now down for Grass as he wants to go to the next age. He's sitting at 117 population, cutting all population, all military uh, production there. This is a big thing, and I like, I really, really like this from Grass. I can't praise this enough. It's uh, The concept is you never want to go up to full population unless you're planning to fight pretty much now. Because if you're sitting on full population, it means you're not able to build villages. And your aim here is Poseidon, as your aim is as Greek, is get yourself to full population villages uh, as fast as you possibly can. That's your aim. Uh, if you can do that, happy days. We do see some side builds coming down, but this gets denied as the uh, Hippocon coming back in onto this position. Him a little bit. Uh, I mean, I... One thing I, I want to talk about a little bit is like farm placement for Gaia players, for Atlantean players. You don't need to have your farms around your town center as Gaia. What you need to do is put them around manors, put them around sentry towers. And then also when you what, what you actually want to be doing around your town center as Atlantean is just putting buildings around your town centers because it plays around things like earthquake, tornado, meteor, those kinds of things. Uh, very, very important. As Rhea coming through, Aphrodite already on the way for Grass as Chemo yeah. a little bit late on that one. Thank you for the 27 months there, Thais. GF, appreciate your consistent support. 38 months, excuse me, not 27. Current, this guy's insane. Thank you for the constant support, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. As the uh, position over here, going to get taken down. Volcanic Forge, a bunch of upgrades going to be coming through for Chemo. Chemo does need to find himself a fight here that is good for him very quickly getting rear is good means he's going to have access to the trader to steal away that Nemean line uh that comes from aphrodite here as that pops out of the temple here but more importantly the behemoth is going to be coming out and that is a big big pushing power for chemo he should definitely be considering getting himself a couple of those out to make a push happen upgrade wise he does have himself irrigation missing that um that flood control but he does have it already queued up in the economic guild sometimes it makes you feel should i build two economic guilds as gaia some of the time here just to ensure i get all my upgrades out as fast as possible but obviously not happening here as the walls coming up on this position for chemo i'd love to see uh the little lush get spread out on these positions here uh, a little bit earlier from chemo just because there's there's no reason for this to be allowed to happen over here 
But Grass is getting in and around on that bottom side of the map there. That's going to be gigantic. A little bit of jockeying back and forth here for Kimo as he's already clicked up through Atlas. But Grass at this point, he's also going to be able to advance. He's already got his market up in the corner of the map. He's got 70 villagers for Fiasis is coming in. There is a timing here. Atlas going to be able to pick off all those units. There is, however, going to be a ceasefire to answer these sort of attacks. So, uh... Kimo is 100% going to be wanting to get a good fight here as the behemoth unfortunately gets taken down super quickly there. He is a weak, weak unit uh, in terms of hack armor. So where most mid units don't feel like they get a whole lot of damage, um, they don't take a whole lot of damage by, by human units, the behemoth and the scarab and any sort of siege unit in the game, uh, if they're just getting targeted by human melee units, that's still a big amount of damage. Colossus is the other one, right? They've all got kind of low, uh, lower than you would expect hack armor. So you can take them out a little bit easier than you might think with hack dealing units. Infantry, Hippocon, villages, etc. But now we see the heavy infantry coming through for Chemo. He's uh, a little bit short on population. I'm not sure exactly what he's spending resources on at this moment. Mark it up on this position here for Chemo to trade. Uh, we do see the trade route started for Grass. He's already got the fortress up on this position as well. As the palace over here coming up for Chemo. As Chemo looking to push through yet again. But I mean... We'll see how it's going to go. He's got the forward position here, so Atlas is going to get a lot of damage done if he can get that implode in on this position here. He needs line of sight, though, if we take a look at what he's going to be waiting for. Uh, definitely just chuck it down over here. It's not going to be a bad idea, as he does do so. The army going to get completely caught out here, as all of them are trying to retreat back, but at this point, they basically just die. Plenty of ult gets dropped down. Heavy infantry coming through. Fortified town centers coming through. No real good siege in for chemo just yet this is the big problem grass is losing all of his population he's got no resources in the bank this is a huge timing there will be a ceasefire but but what do you do about it what do you do now for grass he gets a bunch of those militia in here as the army going to be continuing to push through as a big help for uh for grass with all those militia they've also got heavy infantry as well there's the uh, the ceasefire. Now, Chemo, he's got a big advantage at this moment. Where do you spend the resources is the question because you know you're on a timer here for Gaia in some way, shape, or form. Hephaestus is in for Grass, which means Forge of Olympus is coming, which means all of the armor upgrades are coming through. If you get to full iron here as the Gaia player, you might be able... To, to find yourself a way to push through. But in general here, you need to be one step in front. So I think what Kimo needs to do here, I think he needs to have a second armory up. He needs to be getting two armory upgrades out at once and trading really, really well post uh, ceasefire. Great trader onto the Heliopolis here. This is good because this means not only does, he, does uh, Grass have one less Heliopolis, but... It means that he's going to be able to siege down this town center with much more reckless abandon than otherwise. The other thing I probably would have liked to see Kimo get done here is a uh, a cheeky little building on this position. It looks like Kimo has snuck around here. There is a cheeky stable over here that I think Kimo's aware of now. As the unit's pushing in, uh, there is, however, a, a, a Colossus that Kimo won't be able to get because he didn't trade to that one so i mean what's better a heliopolis or a colossus you tell me i'm not 100 percent sure that's the arcus defending nicely champion arcus here as well bronze weapons coming through for chemo as he pulls back copper shields burning pitch already in for grass he must be really really hurting on the food to be not getting any other upgrades uh population wise here chemo still holding he's got tons of food in the bank i don't know what he's saving that food up for here at the moment he could get a temple make some behemoths and go for like a side raid down the bottom side of the map there as a colossus moving forward to get some more damage done fire siphons coming out one of the big big weaknesses to the heliopolis is the fire siphon of, for, for Atlanteans. Atlanteans need to be building fire siphons to take out the Heliopolis. It's because the Heliopolis only has 50% crush armor, meaning that the 55 crush damage the fire siphon is doing per second is a big deal as this uh, Colossus is tanking the Palace, stealing the large gold mine away there as well. 
uh, as the Citizen trying to break through. This wall is not finished over here. He hasn't finished off the gate there. We'll see if Kimo's going to notice that one or not as the Polyphemus does end up going down. And more units coming through onto this position here to take out those Heliopoli. But it looks like a palace will fall for Kimo as Bronze Mail, Bronze Shields, Copper Weapons coming through. Irrigation coming through as well for Grass. Kimo here, how is his upgrades going? He does have... Bronze weapons and shields upgrade. So he's in a good position where that's concerned. You don't really need to get yourself the armor upgrades in this position for chemo because what units are gonna, what units are really killing off these Arcus? It's not gonna be Hippocon, even though you're playing against Poseidon, he's not gonna be Hippocon, it's gonna be uh, Heliopolis pierce damage. It's gonna be Archer pierce damage, it's gonna be Town Center pierce damage. So chemo can simply just skip. The bronze line, the bronze upgrade, not the bronze upgrade, the male upgrades from the armor, armory, and be completely fine here. As we are seeing the fortress getting targeted down. Can grass hold on this position? Nothing happening over on this side as we do see a straggler Mermilla or two with the catapulty coming over here to just deal with that straggler villager. So that no chaos is going to continue there. Uh, but one problem here for Chemo. How much of a problem it is versus how much of a assistance it is, you will be the judge, but Kimo was majority Arcus at this point, which means he can't deal with uh, the Heliopolis all so well. He might want to consider cutting Arcus for a little bit, just building Fire Siphon and getting some more Palace out. Um, idea being, obviously, more Fire Siphon means you deal with those Heliopolis much better. Uh, good micro there from Kimo as well to pull away. He does have himself the Engineer's upgrade to boot, and he, uh, and Grass does not yet have that one. Flood control coming through for Grass. One big thing that Kimo is missing in this game right now is no market in the corner and no trade route started. He probably needs to think about that. This is part of the reason why Kimo is able to push, though, is he doesn't have that population invested into trade route, but this will allow Grass's economy to keep on pushing further and further in front here as those Heliopoli are getting taken down very nicely. Another trader onto the Heliopolis there, and I love this positioning here from Kimo right in front of those Toxoid. He's going to be tanking a lot there as the village is pushing forward to try and join in. Uh, still no Divine Blood for Grass in this game as the town center ends up falling. Kimo making a great push here. Watchtower's coming through for Kimo as well as he's about to put some Watchtowers down onto the front here. Uh, the Polyphemus, though, getting some huge damage done onto that Heliopolis. Good, good micro here from Kimo to pull away. Still no pressure onto this position here. I think that a, a Catapult here would have done absolute wonders for Grass on that position there. As a Fortress is going to be popping up over here as well for Grass. He knows losing this Fortress means a ton of Militia pop out. Iron Weapons, Iron Mail coming through for Grass. There's Bronze Mail coming through for Kimo at this point. Kimo does have some incredibly good upgrades himself, but how is he going to manage to get himself full iron versus grass's full iron? But however, one thing to note here is grass is getting himself iron mail, which arguably here has got no impact. So we'll see how it we'll see how it all goes. But grass down to 140 population. The trade route's going to get taken down as well. Fortresses, more fortress coming up here for grass. This is a town center is going to get lushed very very shortly, which means grass can no longer build it. Uh, one of the unique abilities of Gaia is having the Gaia lush, and obviously you cannot build on said Gaia lush. Uh, as the fortress over here does end up going down. And Grass is just struggling. He's getting himself out heavy archers. He's got zero resources in the bank. Kimo is slow pushing uh, as best as he can. We do have to remember that while Grass is at 140 population, uh, he does have a plenty vault. So technically speaking, it's 150 versus 160, which is only really a handful of units. So it's only like five units, which is a lot, but it's in the grand scheme of things, Grass can trim down his economy now that he's got full upgrades and he can probably get himself a decent army out here. Uh, but we'll see how things are going to be going. He is wasting some uh, some of this food onto these uh, infantry units, which I really don't think are going to be doing all too much in these positions as the uh, villager gets a watchtower up that secures the town center and we see guard towers and crenellations coming through here for, for Kimo. It's another fortress going down before... The Heliopolis comes out, but the Polyphemus does pop out here. 63% Pierce armor is a lot 
of Pierce armor, but it's only one unit and it's only 702 HP. So it will end up going down eventually after surviving for a very long time. Meanwhile, the militia still pushing up over onto this spot. He's going to take out a couple more fire siphons of Chemo. Is Chemo here managing to clean up the majority of these units here on this position? Palace comes down for Chemo as well. As we do see, I mean, Grass is just trying to building spam here as best as he can to stay alive. But the, the question really becomes, when is Grass going to be doing anything else apart from defend? He needs to put, when you're down a town center, part of the way you come back is hitting your opponent's economy. Is hitting your opponent's town centers. Not fighting where they're full pop is a very, very big thing. And another final trader getting dropped down as another Heliopolis coming over into Chemo's possession. Chemo has been very specific about this trader usage in this game, just hitting Heliopoli throughout this game. I think it's a good idea. I think if you don't need to trader the enemy Chimera, for example, the uh, Heliopoli are, are, are just as good as a Colossus in many different ways. Uh, so I love the idea there from, from Chemo. There's a town center coming up for Chemo. Now, one thing that Chemo will find challenging here, even with the Gaia economy, and Gaia economy is no different from Kronos or Uranus late game economy, um, unless you have trade route, is that Chemo has no trade route yet. He needs to start a trade route when you're on three town centers, when you have 180 population, you basically need 10 to 20 llama caravans. To, to survive here as the town center coming up we do see a cheeky heliopolis will be making its way in to deny the town center for the time being here but grass's trade route down to 18 at this point he is losing those very very quickly and then really not getting through to get that uh that that gold in at the moment the fire siphon does pop out going to be able to take out that heliopolis relatively quickly here as well as the citizen coming over here one thing i do think is not a terrible idea for for atlantean players is when you got fully upgraded citizens and i mean fully upgraded citizens i mean fully armified citizens which means when you got full iron it's worth it to utilize a full hp citizen by the hero citizen upgrade and then target down enemy heliopolis not only do they get the bonus damage but they also for being a, a villager versus a uh a siege weapon but they also get um all the armor so they become like this ridiculous tank they get the armor and i believe they get some speed as well so they become this ridiculous tank that doesn't die picks off the enemy heliopolis really fast uh and can be a really really big addition to your army uh, but grass here holding nicely heliopolis being the brunt of the army here that grass is making does give him an advantage in these fights considerably because these Arcus just don't do anything but Kimo could transition here into something a little bit more useful he could go into cavalry at the moment there's no towers no problem in building cavalry versus uh versus uh someone who's got no watchtowers because they're, they're completely fine they work great we do see the trade starting up now for Kimo. he's got one llama caravan at the moment just one just the one boiling oil also coming through for Kimo. As the destroyers fanatics coming in onto this position, we do see the citizen coming over, going to start shanking this uh, Heliopolis down. Just look at the damage it comes through there. I, 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 I definitely think the hero citizens are worth trying out. I think like, you can't not. Iron weapons now coming. Excuse me. Iron weapons now coming through as well for Chemo, as he's uh, about to have an unkillable army basically here. Town Center now coming up as well for Chemo as the tower over here coming through. Unit's going to sneak in over onto this position to try and take out the Heliopolis there. Villagers pulling back and forth. Can't get onto that gold mine there either as Grass. He's still got one gold mine left in the bottom corner there. So even though he's lost a whole bunch of doggy caravans, he's still got 20. He's actually been building them throughout this position here. Maybe a little bit too economic focused where that's concerned. Might have been a better idea to go in with something a little bit more specific like instead of meddling the Kodong caravans having a little bit more population for economy to for army to push through here uh but and again would he have been able to afford all the stuff he's producing i don't know town center starting again you do see this uh village is getting targeted by these 
very brutally strong militia. One population, 48% hack, 41% pierce, 10.5 damage. Compare it to a hoplite, it's pretty similar. It's very, very strong for a one population unit. <laughs> strong things are good though, right? Strong things are good. A couple of hero arc is coming over to help out. Not the best of units to deal with a, uh, a Colossus. I, I would definitely... Um, if you're gonna, if you had your choice of best unit to use against a Colossus for Atlantean, probably like Hero Cantarius, Hero Destroyer, Hero Fanatic, Hero Mamillo. Some of those units are, uh, are your best idea. But the Arcus don't die because they can sit underneath these towers and enjoy that. There's a citizen going to be coming back onto this town center to try and get it up. One option here for Chemo because he's got the pop advantage. Break down this wall. Start putting buildings down here. Harass this back town center. Uh, so long as he holds over here, he doesn't need to get the town center up. Uh, but oftentimes I think players can kind of tunnel vision on one location because they know if they just don't get, get rid of if they don't lose it, there's no way that they lose the game. So it can be um, a difficult one where that's concerned to decide. As, how's the trade rate going? Still not really coming through here for chemo just yet lots of wood in the bank lots of gold coinage coming through as well as chemo just wants to get that uh that speedy llama caravan where is it? where's that one llama caravan 4.56 speed versus 4.56 speed it's about to go up even more with that coinage coinage coming through that's the colossus sneaking through here as well Fire Siphon retreating away from this position to try and keep himself alive for against that Colossus as the hero Arcus will be able to deal with this. More towers slowly coming up. One of the other little things, little known facts about Gaia, which is actually a really big um, big advantage, is that the, the Gaia buildings are actually going to be regenerating. It's a very slow amount. Apparently it doesn't show me how much it is. Does it show me here? No. Um, it's a slow amount, but they do heal themselves back up. You can see it's slowly going back up over time. So it, become, it can become very challenging to clean up all these buildings if you're only doing a little chip damage over time there. Titan Shield also coming through for Chemo to help himself out as he's going to start the town center yet again. A cheeky little Argus going to be coming in here as well to help against any sort of uh, Colossus shenanigans. As the destroyer is going after the fortress over here as well. And I, I mean, if he can get in and take the fortress down, that's a big thing. As the Heliopolite, uh, can he swing through? He is getting pulled back at the moment. Four citizen onto the... Five citizen, excuse me. Uh, looks like four, but it's five. Five citizen onto the town center now. That is going to be going up very quickly here. Grass is not going to be wanting to, to see that one going up at all. But look at Kimo's economy. He can't support this town center just yet. So we'll see how he's going to go once it goes up. And, I mean, the village is obviously going to come back onto other stuff here as the unit... We do see the Heliopolis coming in. Hoplites targeting the town center down. Argus queued over onto the Colossus immediately. Town center, 2400, 2500. Heliopolis hits. Heliopolis barely stops it there, but it does fall. And the town center here is getting slightly targeted down, but it looks as though the town center for Chemo will end up getting up. He's now got himself 180 population to play with. Now, plus he's got those citizens that can jump onto this gold mine and help out his gold problems here in this game plus the Dilama caravans are spamming out here he's only building him from one market here though so he's still got the resources to play with otherwise but he's not over committing on to spamming trade route either at this moment but that does mean it's going to have a little bit of time to play like a little bit of it's going to be a little while until that all works out as the colossus pops out here argus on route slimes the colossus down immediately huge Huge play there for Chemo as Grass loses that Colossus immediately as the Fire Siphon going to be queuing up over here trying to take out the Fortress and everything else here uh, as Grass is getting pushed back into his into his box onto the onto that side of the map there. More units getting taken out as they're trying to push through. I mean, what else can Grass do? This position is still very, very open to attack. Grass hasn't made one single uh, movement there. Neither is Kima. They've just both accepted that that position is just impassable, it seems. As the Heliopoli here with uh, 
Couple of units garrisoned inside. I do think that this is worthwhile doing. If your opponent's only got archers, garrisoning inside your Helioplai uh, to get bonus damage while having infinite, nearly infinite HP with the 650 HP that the Heliopolis has um, can be a good way to play, but maybe a little bit too late for that. It's another temple up here coming through the market over here. Is going to get pushed in as well as we'll see what Grass can come up with here. I mean, you have the option of Titan, you have the option of Wonder. Uh, you still some sort of chances here for Grass, but I mean, he does need to control this corner and he is down now. 40 population, technically 30 population, here, which is a lot, but he's still down on that population there. Uh, as his, his population is dwindling as well as this mass Arcus ball that Kimo is making is doing a great job of, of causing problems for Grass in this game. As the citizen's going to be retreating back over to the tower over here. But what else, what else can Grass do? I don't see it. I don't see it for Grass here. I, I mean, he's not moving towards anything else here at the moment. He's just... Consistently spamming in onto this position as a guard tower moving in for, for Kimo. He's slowly but surely going to break in and take this town into here out. Colossus coming through as well here for, uh, for Grass. I'm sure was there was there was an Argus somewhere, but he might not be built. There he is. If you get if this does this upgrade speed the Argus up as what the Argus up as well? Or am I going crazy? No, it doesn't. It's just recharge time. The grass is still playing this one out. My Orichalcos carrier pigeons as well for chemo, just ensuring he sees everything on the map. Again, like just a behemoth or something through here. Just something break this wall. Push in. Maybe Kimo doesn't want to give Grass the idea. The fire siphon. Grass's fortress. Not got a whole lot left over here. I mean, it's a slow push for Atlantean, and it. I mean, it's always been a slow push for Atlantean. That's that's kind of always been the thing. It's not. It's not like Atlantean's not like Egyptian, not like Greek, where you just get these huge, big siege weapons and and break through. The fire siphon, though. I mean, it is sixty nine crush damage, but you. You kind of need a lot more of them to make anything happen. And now Kimo slowly getting up to that kind of nice position of having 20 Llama Caravans as he's pushing into the main base now, taking villagers out over here as well. Grass has got no gold mines remaining on the map. No real gold either remaining as he's now dropped below 100 population. Eight donkey caravans as well here. As the fortress on this spot will end up falling. As the guard towers are all down over here as well. And we'll see. <laughs> you get the Io Guardian. That's... There you go. The Guardian of Io is the Io Guardian in the... Uh, you don't see this tech coming through very often. But it's weird. If you look at the Protox, um, which is the file where all of the... The, the, the data, the unit data is, or, or the tech tree, where all the tech data is. All of the titans, as we finally see Grass tap out, and I've gone off on this tangent, uh, so I'll finish it, but all of the titans um, upgrades and units are different to the end name that they ended up coming with. And, and for some reason, they just decided they couldn't be bothered fixing it before they launched the game. So we kind of, if you look at this, the files and you look at these things, get some funny... Uh, funny names anyways uh really really good game here from Kimo. he really showed that it's not that simple for greek in this matchup you can't just sit back and boom and expect to to find a win here like grass did he even had the ceasefire he just lost all of his units he loses the towns in a really quickly and he just can't hold 
going for these sorts of plays. Maybe it would have been a better idea here for Graz to go something like like Artemis, Earthquake, this talent center, and make a, a little maneuver around here to grab this location while sacking over here or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but Chemo seemingly too strong in this game. If you guys enjoyed this one, please consider the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.